Hi everyone, this is the second video in the series taking a look at Jane Eyre. So if you haven't checked out the first one, please do so. That one is called Jane Eyre Context. Now this video we're going to focus specifically on Gateshead Hall and we're going to be able to understand the location and the role it played in the protagonist's life. Now if you haven't done so already, please give me a like and subscribe, it really does help us out when you do so. First things first then, what I'd like you to do is to look at the images and attempt the challenges that follow. Challenge. Recall anything you can remember about our last lesson. And then the super challenge. Use the images to predict the main section or themes that this lesson will focus on. Now if you want to spend more time thinking about this, please feel free to pause the video here. We're now going to jump ahead and start off with today's lesson. Class feedback. Check your understanding against the answers below. So for our challenge then, what we looked at last lesson was the context. So these were some of the issues facing women in industrial Britain. We were able to recall some of the key characters and some of their traits. We were also able to recall some of the key quotations. Now for this lesson, what we're going to be thinking about is, we think about those images that we've just seen in the previous slide. We're thinking about violence that Jane Eyre experiences during the first chapters of the, of the novel and the sense of justice that really drives her personality. Now this is going to be really integral when you think about some of the major themes that come up, not only in the novel, but also the kind of things that are expected of you when it comes to the assessment as well. By the end of the lesson, you'll be able to recall the key events within Gateshead Hall, understand a central theme within the novel, and finally, apply your understanding to an exam style question. Look at the closed passage below and work out what words go in the gaps. So here on the left hand side we have our closed passage and on the right we have all the possible words that could go into the gaps. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to read through them and as I do I want you to try and think about what words could possibly go into each gap. Okay so it says then, Jane spends most of her time in Gateshead Hall inside due to the blank and often blank weather. She is treated as a blank by her blank. The only comfort she finds is by hiding out in the library. When discovered by blank, the pair fight and Jane gets hit so hard she nearly blank blank. While at Gateshead Hall, Jane constantly finds herself in conflict with everyone who lives there. She believes that if she would have been a blank 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 child then her early life would have been more blank so if you'd like to pause the video here and go through it at your own time please feel free to do so remember just use this as a little bit of a guide to test your understanding of the first four chapters of the novel we're now going to jump ahead and look through the answers in the next part of the video that's feedback check your answers against the ones below so here on the left hand side we have our closed passage and the first thing to think about would be this first section. So Jane spends most of her time in Gateshead Hall inside due to the gloomy and often horrible weather. Now this is actually quite an important element within the novel. Often when the weather reflects uh, the mood of the characters, we refer to this as pathetic fallacy. And this is something that's actually integral to the novel as it is used in many of the different locations as well. She is treated as a burden by her aunt. And the only comfort she finds is by hiding out in the library. When discovered by John, the fair pot fight and Jane gets hit so hard she nearly loses consciousness. While at Gateshead Hall, Jane constantly finds herself in conflict with everyone who lives there. She believes that had she been an exciting, handsome, romping child, then her early life would have been more pleasant. So now that we've got that in the correct order now, what I'd like to think about is the following challenges. So first of all, how confident do you feel about chapters one to four of the no novel? Then the super challenge, recall any key events or quotations from this part of the novel. It can be quite difficult when it comes to recalling quotations for this text. So it's really important that we spend that extra time, just go over it and make sure you're confident in what you need to know for the assessment. Then the mega challenge, how might this section link to the theme of isolation? And that's going to be very important as that's what we're going to focus on with our exam style question. Look at the exam question and attempt the challenges that follow. So the question we're going to be focusing on is, how has the theme of isolation been presented in the extract and the rest of the novel? 
So before we actually start looking at the extract, I want you to think about how confident you feel about the actual exam question. Do you feel like there's a lot of things you could talk about? Do you understand this theme quite well? And are there other elements within the novel that you could use to actually answer this question effectively? The next thing then would be the super challenge. So what kind of chapters or sections of the novel could you use to write your response? Now, if you're thinking about a question like this and you really have no idea about the kind of section that you could get a good quotation from, then that means that you need to spend a bit more time getting familiar with the novel and knowing what happens in each specific section. And that's going to make it a lot easier when you approach the exam. So now what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at the extracts in the next part of the video. And this is going to help us to come up with some general ideas to help approach the question that we've just went through. Look at the extract below and identify the key quotations for the exam question. So here we have our extracts and we also have the exam question there. So it says then, I was at Discord in Gateshead Hall. I was like nobody there. I had nothing in harmony with Mrs. Reed or her children or a chosen visitage. If they did not love me, in fact, as little did I love them, they were not bound to regard with affection a thing that could not sympathise with one amongst them. A heritage of thing opposed to them in temperament, incapacity, improportunities, a useless thing incapable of serving their interest or adding to their pleasure, a noxious thing cherishing the germs of indignation at their treatment, of contempt of their judgment. I know that I had been a sanguine, a brilliant, careless, excited, handsome, romping child, though equally dependent and friendless. Mrs. Reed would have enjoyed my presence more complacently. Her children would have entertained me for more of the cordiality of fellow feeling. The servants would have been less prone to make me the scapegoats of the nursery. So have a good think about the extract then. Again, if you need to spend some time reading through it yourself, please feel free to do so. We're now going to think about how this can actually apply to the exam question that we've been looking at. Complete the table to help plan your response. So what we have here then is we have several different quotations taken not just from the extract that we've just looked at but also from other elements of the novel as well. So for each one you need to think about for each quote what is the writer's method so it'll be language structure or anything like that and then what could we analyze in relation to the exam question. So the first one says then I care for myself the more solitary the more friendless the more unsustained I am the more I will respect myself. So try and think about any method that you can see within the quote and then think how does this relate back to the exam question. If you can stretch yourself a little bit further as well, try and think how does this actually relate to the novel, at what point does it come in, so what chapter or what section do we see this kind of quotation. So the next one says, had I been a sanguine, brilliant, careless, exciting, handsome, romping child, the equally dependent and friendless, Mrs. Reed would have enjoyed my presence more complacently. And the final one, I have an inward treasure born within me, which can keep me alive if all extraneous delight should be within, withheld, or offered only at a price I cannot afford to give. So again, with each one, think about how you can relate them back to the exam question that we've just looked at. Class feedback. Check your understanding against the completed table. So here on the left hand side then we have the completed quotations that we just went through and for the first one then we have a group of three or interesting adjectives. So if you're not sure what we mean by this, a group of three are three ideas towards a common goal. So we have the more solitary, friendless and the more unsustained as well. So three things towards a common goal. Now how can we analyse this and how does it help us to approach the question? This shows how Jane values independence over the company of others. This contrasts against the perception of women at the time, as it. Now I've left the dot 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 there because it actually allows you to build on that point and think about how you could ingrain some sense of context within the quotation as well. So for the second one, we have an ascendetic list. If you're not sure what we mean by that, this is where you're listing something and it often uses a comma to list them. So you've got words like brilliant, careless, exciting, handsome, all of which are being listed. We have a semantic field and a semantic field is a group of words with a common uh, connection. And you can see here you've got some very, very positive adjectives or, or ones that were perceived to be ad, um, positive during the time, all of which are things that Jane doesn't possess herself. 
and we also have some interesting adjectives. So in terms of our analysis then, the positive semantic field illustrates Jane's understanding of the qualities she lacks and further emphasises her sense of isolation. So for the final one, we have a metaphor. It says I have an inward treasure born within me. And what that really refers to is the metaphor of um, saying that the treasure, which is a noun, implies Jane's ability to be strong and resilient even when she is on her own. Again, this is completely contrasting the normal perception that they had of women at the time. So all of this is really good to comment on. And if you can link it to something appropriate, do try and make a comment on context as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just take a quick look at the actual assessment objectives that will, will be used to actually dictate the marks you'll get for this assessment. So the first thing to think about would be AO1. So if AO1 says you need to read, understand and respond to texts. So essentially what that means is that you're able to read and understand the actual novel, you're able to make appropriate references as well, and that you're able to give your own interpretation on what they might mean or how they might link to the focus of the exam question. Secondly, we have AO2. Now, this is a very typical thing to think about, not only for English literature, but also for language as well. And that is analysing the language, form and structure by the writer. And essentially, when we're talking about this, we're thinking about what kind of things does the writer do? What kind of methods have they used to actually get central messages across to the audience? AO3 would be about understanding the context within the novel. So what can you learn about society within the book? Um, what kind of ideas do they have about things like power and things like that during Bronte's day? So you've got to think about all of the kind of contextual factors that would impact the actual novel. And the final one, AO4, use a range of vocabulary, sentence structures and spag with clarity. So it's always important just to keep at the back of your mind, even though you are focusing largely on a novel, you still do need to make sure that you maintain a decent level of literacy in your writing as well. Look at the student response and attempt the challenges that follow. The writer has used a simile to describe the character in the novel. This might be seen in the quote, I have an inward treasure born with me, which can be alive if all extraneous delights should be withheld. This shows that Jane is used to being alone. The verb withheld suggests she can cope with feeling isolated due to the way she's been treated as a child. This would have been an unusual viewpoint for a woman during the time the novel was written. So once we've read through the response, what I'd just like you to do is to have a look at the challenges on the right hand side. So again, we're still focusing on the exam question at the top. How is the theme of isolation being presented in the extract and the rest of the novel? So first of all, what I'd like to do is I'd like to try and identify three or more ways that this response might be improved. Then if you can stretch yourself, think back to the AOs that we've just been through and think which one of the assessment objectives do you think the response has achieved? Then finally, for the mega challenge, use this response as a starting point to write an approved attempt at the exam question. If you need any additional support or help, the new videos will be added every single week. Alternatively, leave us a comment below or visit our, book, our partner channel, Bookworm Teaching, for more lessons and guidance on all things English. Thanks ever so much for listening, guys, and all the best with your work and revision in the future. Bye bye.